Good evening, Indonesian time to everyone. We thank Indonesia to you all participants and speaker from Diponegoro University Indonesia, and I will be the moderator of this webinar. This is a really very good and interesting international webinar with the topic of sustainable university and food sufficiency during COVID-19 pandemic. Not only that sustainable university and food sufficiency are very important issues, but also the situation that we are all facing right now with this COVID-19 pandemic, something that we have to work hard and work smart to overcome this worldwide problem. Dear all participants, First, I would like to invite Prof. Riri Putrisari as the chairperson of UI Green Metric World University Ranking to give short report speech. Please, Prof. Riri, time is yours. Thank you very much, Prof. Amber. Uh, good evening, everyone from Indonesia. I would like to welcome you all from 35 countries, more than 320 participants. Some are, uh, cannot uh, join the Zoom, but will watch it through the YouTube channel live now. Uh, I'm so happy that we will have a, a very prominent uh, uh, many speakers today uh, from uh, four continents at Australia. So uh, we have we are separated uh, from different time zone. That is why this evening we have uh, Jaime from uh, Colombia. We have Professor Santiago Garcia, Rector of uh, Oviedo University, Rector of Kazakhstan National Agrarian University, Professor Lectas Yespolo, uh, in which I know that uh, I've been to his beautiful campus with the uh, beautiful farm uh, uh, in Kazakhstan, in Almaty, and also Professor Arif Satria from IPB University, Indonesia, and Dr. Herlin Chien, National Coordinator of UI Green Medic for Chinese Taipei, and uh, from National University of Science and Technology, and we have also a Professor Ojdi Korba, a visit university and his farm also in University of Sousse, Tunisia, and Professor Esmail Karakamideh Kordi, uh, from also from Zanjan University, an agrarian university in Iran, and Dr. Jaime Romero Infante from uh, Colombia. So. Um, Today is going to be the first uh, series of webinar uh, of UI Green Metric University participants, uh, which we, in which we will discuss uh, many issues regarding our efforts and uh, different approach uh, to combat or to uh, to uh, combat the problem uh, and to see how our sustainable university can. Uh, survive and also can overcome all the problems of, uh, during this COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, uh, we would like to say condolence to uh, their loved ones during this COVID-19, but knowing that all of us are here gathered today with all this spirit of uh, making our green uh, uh, still works, still uh, operating uh, in the most economical, but also uh, look forward for the next uh, things that uh, we should do to combat the problem in our university that we can all make it. I would like to say hello to some uh, national coordinators. Uh, I uh, also uh, see Birte, I think, from Harvard University, and uh, I've seen many from Turkey, from 35 countries, so many, and uh, I'm so happy that we are going to uh, go to the next page, uh, distribute or spread the spirit of positivity to our university, to our student, to the next generation. Without any further ado, I would like to give back uh, and I would like to say uh, I wish you all a good uh, webinar tonight. Back to you, uh, Professor Ambar. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Riri. Uh... I wonder if Dr. Agustin Kusumayanti already here with us? No? We can start. Okay. Uh, 
Before we start, I also would like to introduce again all speakers that we have tonight. We are very lucky to have seven speakers from different backgrounds, different university or even different continents. Uh, please, when I say your name, raise your hand so that we know who you, which one you are. The first one, Professor Santiago Garcia Granda, National Coordinator of UI Green Metric World University Ranking Network for Universities in Spain, and he also rector University of Oviedo, Spain. Hello. Hi, Hello. Bro. Thank you for coming, bro. Thank you. Second speaker, Professor Teclas Yespolov, National Coordinator of UI Green Metric World University Ranking Network of four universities in Kazakhstan, and he also rector of Kazakh National Agrarian University, Kazakhstan. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, good evening. Uh, today, our um, rector um, now uh, that at this time he's in another meeting, uh, which organized by the government of Kazakhstan. That's why um, I will represent uh, his uh, report. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. For this uh, third speaker, Professor Dr. Arif Satria. Rector of IPB University Indonesia, or maybe IPB representative? Not here yet? Okay. For the fourth speaker, Dr. Herlin Chen, National Coordinator of UI Green Metric World University Ranking Network for Universities in Chinese Taipei. She also Vice Dean of International Affairs, National Pingtung University Science and Technology, Chinese Taipei. Here. Can you hear me? Yes. Hear? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Next one, Professor Kwadi Korba, National Coordinator of UI Green Metric World University Ranking Network for Universities in Tunisia. And uh, he also professor at University of Sose, Tunisia. Thank you, sir. Next speaker, Dr. Esmail Karami Deh Kordi, National Coordinator of UI Green Metric World University Ranking Network for universities in Iran. And he also director of International Scientific Cooperation Office, University of Zanzan, Iran. Thank you, sir. Hello, good afternoon. Thank you very much for organizing this webinar. Thank you. Thank you. The last speaker, Dr. Jaime Alberto Romero Infante, National Coordinator of UI Green Metric World University Ranking Network for Universities in Colombia. He also Director of Environmental Business Management Master, El Bosque University, Colombia. Good morning, everyone. From Good Colombia, morning. from Bogota. Good morning. Okay, to all speakers, your time of presentation is only 10 minutes each. Please do manage your time wisely. Without further ado, I would like to invite our first speaker. The first one, please, Professor Santiago Garcia Granda from Spain with presentation title, Managing Sustainable University and Food Sufficiency at the University of Oviedo during COVID-19 pandemic. Time is yours, sir. Thank you. Uh, uh, can you can you see my presentation on the screen? Yes, we can. Okay. Okay. So I will I will go through and uh, I try to to use my time as, as best as possible. If I if I consume my time, you just stop me, right? No problem. Yeah, we'll do. We'll do. Okay. So uh, first of all, I will I would like to start. Uh, thanking uh, Professor Riri, Professor Riri for for inviting me to stay uh, with you today and uh, and say hello to, to all of you and also to the University of Indonesia. Uh, uh, we have a very good time in Asturias uh, some months ago with uh, Professor Riri. Uh, I, I entitled my my short talk: Universities as Sustainable Actors in the COVID-19 crisis. 
I would like to speak a little bit very shortly of the mission, vision, and uh, values of the Spanish universities. Uh, I believe uh, the universities have to undertake these kind of projects all together. So that's what we do in Spain. And we have this conference of rectors of the Spanish universities involving uh, almost all the universities in Spain, public and private universities. This helped us to, to, to just to, to fulfill our mission, which is uh, not other than work together and be the voice of the Spanish universities. I think if we can, if we can uh, get in this, uh, in this uh, way our uh, goals more uh, easily and more efficiently. So let's try to see the next slide. Okay. Uh, so what, what are the Spanish university uh, doing uh, in, on the, uh, on the uh, SDGs? I think we have uh, four uh, approaches very important for all universities. First is, is education and training. This is our main goal. So uh, we have to, in, to involve all, uh, to, to include in our, in all our, our education, all the uh, disciplines, all the uh, subjects concerning the uh, uh, 2030 agenda. This is uh, a very good, uh, very good approach. So the second one is research and our research, research lines have to be oriented on that, on that sense. So it, this is the, 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 a major contribution of the universities only. But we have to translate, or as you know, this knowledge to the society and also educate the society. I think it's very important to promote the empowerment of the civil society. And we can do this from the university. I always say that the, we have the 2% of the population at the universities, and this population is the best way to transmit our, our initiatives. And then the third one is that we have to be examples of good practices. And if, you, if our organizations work with good practices, they will be transmitted to the, universe, to the society. So the, it's a good opportunity for the universities, the, uh, the, uh, the 2030 agenda, but it's also one uh, opportunity uh, to the, uh, to the uh, goals itself, to use the universities, because the universities can do new approaches, can do uh, models and can do many things to translate to the society. But with the universities, are benefiting, benefit, have uh, to, uh, they benefit from this also because there is even some financial support getting from this. So what we do at the University of Oviedo, the University of Oviedo, we, we signed in 2018 the uh, SDG declaration of Salamanca. We are committed to that. And, the, uh, and we do uh, our analysis, our own analysis and prioritization and our programs and also the, uh, to align our strategies. And we do that, we, we, thought, we, we found one instrument, which is this, this corporate social report. We started to do that two years ago in 2017, and uh, we did the second report this year, and we are also participating in Alliance. And the, the, uh, the, uh, 2020, uh, in 2020, we have uh, members of the of the uh, sustainable de uh, development uh, solutions network. So, in our uh, first uh, uh, corporate social report, we analyze the uh, uh, the uh, inclusion of our uh, of the uh, goals of the, uh, of the agenda in our programs, and with this information, we could correct uh, many of the of the. Uh, 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 problems we have to just to uh, educate our students uh, on all the uh, all these keywords that defines the the, uh, the uh, seventeen the seventeen uh, uh, goals of the of the agenda. Uh, let me pass the second one. Also, is we did the analysis of the alignment of our uh, of our uh, research and uh, and transfer with the SDGs. And we, can, we could uh, uh, identify 
some of our of our uh, of our uh, lines with the with the with the uh, related with the SDG, right? And also our uh, uh, strategy, our strategic plans, we can be analyzed in in uh, in the in the line of this uh, on this uh, 17, 17 goals, right? So in the second memory of the, on this second report, we uh, analyze the, uh, uh, the more important SDGs to, the, to the, our activity. And we identify five, uh, four as a, as a key, uh, uh, key uh, goals. Um, but then there, there are another uh, eight goals, uh, very important, like, uh, Teaching, uh, influence, just uh, attached or, or aligned with the teaching, also with our with our strategy, like uh, number three, number 11, 16, and seventeen, and also in our influence on the on the uh, production, like uh, uh, through the transference or by the research, and it, that is very very much aligned with uh, goal number nine. Uh, we uh, have the uh, we can then uh, analyze the progress of our institution and we see that we are failing in uh, promoting women to be professors in the last uh, in the last uh, in, the, in the top of our of our uh, professorship and also uh, we we can uh, we can analyze our our transparency in this index which is we have not enough data. We are improving, but we have not data. Data and also uh, our uh, behavior on the green metric. We are improving, but we are not improving enough. This that is the meaning of the red red, uh, red arrow pointing up, right? Uh, so, what are the challenges in this uh, pandemic for the University of Oviedo? We we think we can use the same scheme as we use usually. We have the main, our main, uh, uh, our main uh, value is the human capital. Is the, they are the, the human resources, and with that we can transfer the, the 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 knowledge to the society. So if we apply this to our situation, we have collaborated with the with the health authorities and companies, and also very strong collaborations with the NGOs. So the through the cooperation and voluntary programs, we have helped, helped to, the, to fight this pandemic in the university. And also we could, we could collaborate and support the, the problems with the companies and with the startups producing goods and everything for this pandemic. So in, in, uh, we, have, uh, we have launched around 25 uh, uh, research team activity in, the, in, in different fields. And they are starting projects at European, national, and the local level, right? So many of these projects has been uh, uh, proposed and developed in collaboration with the companies, with the local companies, and and also the multinational companies. So, for in, for for example, just to say something, we have one uh, PCR uh, uh, analysis laboratory approved and start up in the in our uh, uh, scientific technical service in our university uh, we uh, support the uh, manufacture of two new uh, respirators for uh, using 3, 3d printers uh, with local companies with multinationals uh, we uh, provide uh, accommodation for the for these people in our in our residence in our colleges uh, we uh, at the beginning of the crisis, the uh, swaps were very scared. So we provide uh, 2,000 swaps and also uh, a lot of uh, material for like gloves or masks or, or, or glasses. So now we are recovering this from the others because we have to start the the uh, the uh, the uh, physical activity now in the in our university, and we are cleaning a lot of masks. In, the, in our service in the university. We have cleaned more than 25 now, 25,000 now. Uh, and also just to, to finish and uh, try to connect with the, uh, with, the, uh, um, with the budget of this meeting, uh, we uh, have been uh, admitted 
as promoter of the, faith, of the fair trade. The University of Oviedo is one of the 13 universities in Spain, which has been uh, just, uh, just uh, got the accreditative stamp to be one of these uh, one of these uh, institutions, right? So to promote, we try to promote uh, in our at our level at all levels the use of a fair fair uh, a fair trade, right? And also we have another uh, instrument which is uh, also working very well at uh, all levels, which is the, the chair for uh, studies of global food governance. So this chair has been established in uh, 2016, just when I became, uh, became a rector of the university. And now is working at all levels, at, I would say promoting research uh, on the physical and economical access to, to the quantitatively and qualitatively adequate sufficient food of vulnerable communi communities. And we are collaborating uh, with the uh, United Nations and we are collaborating worldwide. So uh, trying to change the policies and, and try also to be, as I said before, one uh, model of good practice in our, in our institution. I don't know how much time I, I really uh, spend on, but that is the last slide of my, of my short talk. And uh, I think, uh, thank you very much, all of you, for your, for your attention. If you have questions, maybe we can discuss later. Thank you. Thank you very much, Prof. Santiago Garcia Granda, for your interesting presentation. Uh, th your time is 11 minutes, actually. Yes, so, so it should be okay. For the next speaker, I would like to invite Mr. Jespo Omis Honnov, representative of Rector of uh, Rector of uh, Kazakh National Agrarian University, Kazakhstan. Your time, ten minutes, sir. Please, your time is yours. Hello, everyone. Uh, as I told uh, about our director, I want to take part in this event and um, make his report. But unfortunately, uh, now uh, he's in another place at the, at, at the government uh, governmental meeting. So uh, he asked me to report uh, to perform his report. My name is Paul. I am responsible for international cooperation of Kazakh National Agrarian University, and uh, I'll try uh, to uh, share with you uh, with the experience of our university in the. Uh, Period of pandemic, uh, how to uh, how uh, our university managed to um, um, to uh, control the situation at the university and uh, uh, to organize uh, educational process. Uh, and um, so I'll be uh, I'll try to be short. Um, so uh, as you know. Um, as uh, in other countries of the world, Kazakhstan uh, President Kassim Jumar Tokayev uh, also uh, in uh, on uh, 16th of March uh, declared uh, the um, uh, uh, quarantine in Kazakhstan. So uh, since that time, our university also changed uh, its uh, whole uh, policy. So uh, since uh, this time, students and undergraduate and doctoral students have been transferred to remote technologies and sent to their main place of residence. As the main advantage of working at home is that is for the environment, reducing carbon emissions from daily community significantly improve the quality. According to the climate group, working from home can reduce carbon emission by more than uh, 300 million tons per year. Not to uh, mention all the other benefits such as work-life balance and uh, reduced static uh, congestion. We can't fail to note the positive uh, environmental benefits of the coronavirus pandemic, which have caused many uh, rejoice in the change in the environment as the world uh, sees positive ben uh, benefits for the environment. As members of the green team, we want to share our experience with the quarantine and the COVID-19 pandemic. So uh, in place, 
a way, states of emergency and uh, strict quarantine measures have been introduced. Equality has improved significantly. Uh, uh, also, uh, you know, uh, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic and the subsequent quarantine reduced uh, CO2 emissions. Uh, there are several uh, reasons. Uh, these are the above mentioned sections of ways we work more from home, uh, use less transport, and uh, concerts and sport events are cancelled in the world. Almaty uh, was no exception. Almaty residents share photos and videos of mountains that are no longer covered in smoke in social networks. As the city has become cleaner uh, due to the decrease in the number of cars, digitalization and the production of online work reduced the amount of paper used on showed that it is possible to work effectively and get good result in work. As a chairman of the Council of Rectors uh, of Leading of the Cultural Universities in the uh, um, post-Soviet uh, countries, a, our rector is uh, in constant contact with our partners. Uh, he holds uh, online meetings and uh, council meetings uh, and um, uh, he uh, Change, uh, exchange uh, in, uh, in that platforms uh, the participants uh, were exp uh, were experience was uh, exchanged and uh, recommendation were given. Uh, also, uh, our uh, rector um, addressed the rural uh, rural um, entrepreneurs, uh, every resident of the village, household owners, summer resident about the need of effective use of land and other available resources. Uh, these requests uh, received a lot of feedback and uh, suggestions from farmers, entrepreneurs, head of state organizations, local executive bodies, and etc. On May uh, one, uh, one after heavy rain and a stormy wind uh, break occurred in one of the uh, dams of the Sardoy bean uh, reservation reservoir uh, located in the Sardaria region of Uzbekistan. So uh, as a result, um, uh, a lot of uh, uh, lands of uh, Maktaral district of the Turkestan region of Kazakhstan were filled. Uh, and um, uh, this was followed by flooding of settlements in Kazakhstan. In this regard, uh, a, a techno uh, technogenic emergency has been declared in the Turk Turkestan uh, region. Uh, the situation was uh, aggravated by the fact that on May 6, uh, due to heavy uh, precipita precipitation in another area of the Turkestan region, uh, the water level in the uh, river rose. As a result, residents, uh, residential buildings and the buildings were flooded. Two of gas pipelines were damaged, uh, which left uh, residents of the private sector without gas. In the first day of the disaster, the university set up a, a headquarters to help the affect uh, areas. It includes, uh, includes specialists in the field of water, land, forest, resource, agronomists, fruit and vegetable grown, growing uh, soil uh, science, animal uh, husbandry, uh, veterinary medicine, etc. Close ties uh, were established with regional and the district agricultural departments, local agricultural organizations, individual entrepreneurs, and the far farmers. Experts of the universities, um, uh, situation center, and uh, water hub answer questions uh, in a timely manner and uh, conduct daily online consultations. Our specialists went to the field to provide practical assistance uh, due to the fact that the calving season has started, work is underway uh, to save the offspring lunch. Uh, veterinaries give uh, video advice on issues related to this work. The governor of, governor's office of the region asked uh, to involve young volunteers in the work of uh, food relief as well as the distribution and the delivery of humanitarian. And um, our university also 
asked our uh, students, uh, volunteers, uh, to take part in uh, such um, um, actions uh, in uh, the Turkestan region. And um, in our uh, university, uh, also uh, in that situation, switched uh, to a new format for advising farmers and uh, exchanging up to date information. Twice a week, uh, scientists uh, go uh, uh, live and uh, hold online conferences for farmers on all issues of the agro industrial complex. Every week, a week uh, more than 2,000 rural entrepreneurs from all regions of Kazakhstan take part in them. About uh, thousands of questions were received from all region of Kazakhstan farmers, students, and those who are interested in the development of agriculture can get answer uh, to their uh, questions like, this work is carried out on a systematic uh, basis of the university, uh, university Situation Center. On the university website has a page, Agrodamu, Agro development, uh, where rural uh, entrepreneurs direct all of uh, their questions. From farmers and entrepreneurs, in addition to questions, we have received proposals on cooperation uh, and, uh, on, and the skills development. So, uh, excuse, me. Our... excuse me, your time is one minute left. Oh, what? Oh, okay. I'll be uh, short. Uh, so our university also uh, tries uh, to uh, uh, hold uh, its own um, educational programs. Uh, so, and, uh, you know, um, um, uh, uh, we, uh, we try uh, also um, to uh, continue uh, partnership and uh, uh, hold uh, online uh, meetings with our partners. And uh, so uh, I think, uh, uh, you know, uh, our, our country changed on uh, uh, policy uh, and uh, it uh, turns to the agricultural sector. And uh, in uh, future, our university uh, and uh, all our community uh, will uh, make uh, its advantage and uh, survive uh, with a difficult period and uh, period and uh, come out of the situation as a winner. Thanks for attention. Um, I think uh, I I I I I tried to be short. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Very interesting presentation. Uh, you just wait for questions later on. For the next uh, presenter, I would like to invite uh, Professor Jody Ridor Nurrahmat. He is Vice Rector of IPB University. He will present sustainable university and food independence during COVID-19 pandemic lesson learned from IPB University. Prof. Dodi. Um, is yours. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, please, uh, Mrs. Sabrina, uh, the PowerPoint presentation. Not yet. Okay, uh, good evening, everybody. I am uh, Dodi Irdon Rahmat. I represent uh, IPB University Bogor uh, to share about our experience uh, how to uh, cope with uh, COVID-19, uh, particularly in uh, uh, food uh, system and uh, food uh, safety. Not yet. Sabrina, can you help? Professor Dodi, please. Okay, I will try to. Okay, this uh, the program is. Okay, thank you. Uh, 
Okay, uh, we would like to discuss about the food problems during the COVID-19 period, and then the role of sustainable campus, and the role of IBB University Bogor in the uh, COVID-19 pandemic era, and then, then uh, short-term policy recommendation for food security uh, in the COVID-19 era. Yes, this is a uh, uh, food development. We know already about this uh, uh, problem. And uh, in Indonesia, it is a problem because of uh, the lockdown of, in uh, several uh, cities and several areas in Indonesia. So the problem is mainly uh, about the distribution of inputs, agriculture inputs and logistics. Uh, this is a main problem uh, during the COVID-19 uh, situation. Uh, concerning the uh, food security in Indonesia. And this is the estimated available uh, food, yeah, needs and national staple foods. This, uh, Mrs. Sabrina, next, next. Yeah, uh, we have uh, 11 uh, staple foods, yeah, or the most important, uh, the brackets of the important foods in Indonesia, like uh, uh, rice and then corn and so on. And then uh, this is the situation on June to August 2020. And uh, the most important problem is the large scale social distancing, or we, we call it PSBB. It is uh, like a, a area lockdown. So in Indonesia, uh, the lockdown is uh, impacted not in the national level, but uh, in uh, the area level. So like in province level and uh, district or city level. And it is uh, constrained for uh, inputs and agriculture inputs and food distribution. So uh, decreasing demands on agriculture products also happens due to limited operational time of market and then constraint on food distribution due to uh, lockdown policy. And then many restaurants are also closed during the COVID-19 pandemic. And then uh, the middleman dominated the market access, yeah, because usually uh, the middleman uh, has uh, better access to uh, IT and online marketing. Yeah, and then disruption of the food supply chain due to the lockdown causes impact for the majority of small scale producers and consumers. And then the impact on farmers, uh, in some cases, prices fall, and then uh, even lower than production, production costs. It is a problem. And uh, of course, uh, it is uh, very difficult in this situation to get the uh, cheap credit for the farmers. And then uh, this is a, a trade season uh, outlook in Indonesia from May to uh, June uh, 2020, prediction uh, 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 of uh, the dry season, dry season. And then uh, this is the poten potential growth in June, Jul Jul July and August uh, period. And uh, this is uh, the table of growth status prediction and dry stocks for its province uh, during uh, the COVID-19 period, period June, June, July, and August period. So about 50%. Sorry, but we cannot see the presentation. Indonesia. Yeah, please, Mr. Sab Ms. Okay, Sabrina. Yeah. Hello. Okay, I think. Please, Sabrina. Uh, you need to put it in presentation mode. It's not in the this presentation is, mode. Uh, this uh, is show. This is show. Table. Not, not yet. Should be full not yet. screen. Uh, yeah. Page 10. Oh, I will try to uh, upload my uh, presentation by myself. Yeah, I think Prof. Jody, you just share your slide to yourself. Yeah, but uh, the item is 
not here because uh, it's been used by Miss Sabrina. I cannot, I cannot upload my. Uh, I I think Mrs. Sabrina should be stop the sharing and then. Pak Dodi will be share your own presentation. No, not 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 that work. Dr. Dodi, you have okay, your okay. okay. Hopefully. Okay, okay, good, good. Yes. Please, uh, full screen, full screen. Slide show, brother. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Slide okay. show. Okay, fine. That's good, fine. good. This is uh, the table of drought status prediction and the uh, province of uh, Rio, Kepulauan Rio, and so on. 17 provinces in Indonesia has a uh, deficit of uh, the rice stock because of uh, the drought uh, status in uh, this year. And then uh, this is the role of sustainable campus. So we are very strong in the SDGs number two, zero hunger number 11 in the world. And we also we are also contribute to another uh, aspect of the SDGs. Okay. And uh, our campus has important role in realizing national food security uh, of the SDGs through transfer of knowledge, technology, innovation, implementation in campus operation and provision of policy recommendation. This is a transfer of knowledge, technology and innovation in our uh, university. So we have a uh, research, innovation and intellectual property right. And this is the series of food uh, innovation in IPB. Yeah, there are uh, many food innovation, and it is very useful uh, in the era of COVID-19 at the time. And this is uh, implementation of uh, green campus, for example, for example, green transportation, and, and uh, this is the role of uh, IPB Institute during uh, COVID-19 pandemic. So I am leading the uh, crisis center of IPP uh, of uh, uh, COVID-19 anti anticipation. And uh, we have a fifth, five uh, phase of uh, the anticipation of COVID-19. So called the, the uh, first phase is uh, development of awareness and uh, 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 collective action, yeah? starting in the last of February. And then, uh, and second phase, anticipation and the identification of a problem. And then uh, phase three is uh, curing the uh, problem. And uh, phase four is a development of solution. And uh, the last uh, phase is a recovery phase. And this is a, a recent innovation conducted by uh, uh, researchers at IBB University. Yeah, we also uh, contributing in the test of uh, the COVID-19 PCR test. Yeah, uh, particularly uh, for the area of uh, Bogor district, Bogor city, uh, and then uh, West Java and uh, uh, partic uh, in particular Jakarta also. Not uh, all area of Indonesia, but uh, focusing on West Java and uh, part of Jakarta. And... Uh, this is the status of the food safety during the COVID-19. And uh, we contribute to uh, many uh, aspects and research uh, concerning the uh, food uh, security and food safety. And then a learning program. Uh, we also conduct a, a learning program 
and dealing with the distribution of uh, COVID-19 and also transfer of knowledge. We uh, produce a series of the compilation of the tips from the expert yeah, in uh, antici anticipation of COVID-19. Right now we have already uh, published uh, three uh, series of the uh, tips uh, from uh, the expert. And then uh, student well-being, we uh, give uh, what is a free, yeah, free food uh, for students, for 100 students every day, uh, for uh, uh, dinner, for lunch and dinner for uh, more or less 100 uh, students every day. And uh, right now, uh, uh, it has been uh, done within uh, the last uh, two months, yeah, since uh, uh, March, April, and more than two months, March, April, and May. No, for uh, 100 students because uh, uh, the, some of uh, student has uh, a problem with the uh, financial financial problem due to COVID-19, and uh, we help to uh, distribute the uh, uh, food for the students. And, uh, one minute left. Uh, yeah, also, a marketing and then community engagement and uh, many others collaboration with alumni and so on and other social activities and. The last is recommendation. The most important is uh, food logistic distribution and then the accurate data collection. We have uh, some uh, model uh, for COVID-19 uh, distribution and then making a better coordination with the ministries, maintain price stability and labor intensive program development, affirmative program or subsidy for agriculture inputs and then encourage online marketing channels. And then the last uh, is uh, the uh, development or strengthening the village economic institution through uh, what we call it boom dust, boom dust at the uh, village enterprise. I think that's all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Prof. Dodi. Uh, next speaker, I would like to invite Dr. Herlin Chen from Chinese Taipei. Her talk will be Managing Sustainable University and Food Sufficiency at National Ping Pong University of Science and Technology during COVID-19 pandemic. Please time is yours, Dr. Herin Chin. Ten minutes, your time. Hi, everyone. Can you all see my screens? Yes. OK. Um... This is uh, Herdin Chen. Uh, we are the National Pingdong University of Science and Technology from Taiwan. So today, um, here I'm with our Office of International um, Affairs staff and then also our um, New South Wales Project Chief, uh, Dr. Zhang here. Um, we are presenting our university's uh, food sustainability uh, response during the COVID-19 uh, period. So um, we are also the Secretariat of Wunta, which is the university network for uh, tropical agriculture. So our university uh, was founded in 1924, so located in the southern Taiwan. Uh, last year, we just celebrated our 95th uh, anniversary, and some of you were uh, here in the Pindong with us. And our academic and administrative staff, about 1,500 student body about uh, 10,000. Our campus is about 300 uh, hectares, uh, which is the largest university in Taiwan in terms of campus territory. Uh, now we are also the greenest uh, university uh, in Taiwan and number six in Asia. Um, so our nickname for the university is National Park University. For the COVID-19 cases in Taiwan, uh, I think we are now in the world, we have the uh, comparatively fewer cases, but in total, we still have 440 cases in total Taiwan. In near our university, which is the Pingtung County, we have about 12 cases. And then for the whole Taiwan, the death toll is uh, seven. So um, it's not very serious. Um, um, we can still go out in Taiwan and classes still going on, except that if you, your student in a classroom is more than 100, you have to make an online class, which I, I also have an online class. So today I will share three parts. 
uh, about our food sufficiency in response during COVID-19. The first part is we have some students uh, quarantined. Many, they are international students or some local uh, students who were affected by some other um, uh, people who got COVID-19. Second part, I want to share how do we create a more safe eating environment, both in the cafeteria, in the dormitory, and our uh, administrative meetings. The third part, talk about our in-campus safe uh, food provisioning, because we are a uh, university are focused on the uh, smart agriculture. So we do have many departments that can offer in-campus uh, food and then, or uh, stores of food. So first is our quarantine students. From January 28th uh, until now, uh, we have about 24 to 30 something students um, were quarantined during different periods. So each quarantine time according to our Taiwan regulation is at least two weeks. So during the two weeks, students cannot go out. So our campus will deliver food three times a day to those students who cannot uh, go out. And then we will, uh, the food will be delivered by the Office of Student Affairs. And then meal will place in some fixed location so that a uh, student can pick out the food to avoid some contact. Um, in our cafeteria, uh, we have some broadcast system to um, remind the student that please uh, try to take the food home or take it out or to eat in the individual space rather than eating in the cafeteria as usual. Otherwise, the cafeteria is very crowded. And also all the food uh, before COVID-19 were served by the student themselves, but now the the food was served by our staff to uh, again avoid the contact. Before the COVID-19, our cafeteria have one of them have about 80 tables. But after the COVID-19, we uh, um, make some room between the, the table. So now we only place 50 tables and then make sure that we have uh, larger rooms. And then originally each table will uh, have four uh, seating, now only have two seating uh, arrangement. And then we also place some signs on the table saying no hawking while eating, and then try to um, shorten the, your eating time as well. Um, so during this period, uh, we have more and more students take out. About 70% of the meal orders were taken out. And then while others, only 30% were eating in, in uh, the cafeteria. In the dormitory, we originally had uh, the public kitchen, but public kitchen is closed during the COVID-19 period. So all students, um, we're encouraged to order food uh, out campus or in, in campus, but uh, take out to eat in their in their individual uh, space. And uh, many of the administrative meetings were made online. And uh, every day we will take temperature. Our um, computer science division they also develop some app, so all the staff and students need to record our um, temperatures. We take a twice temperature in the morning and the afternoon, and we assign every room some number. So you need to check in uh, by keying this number. So we know that you enter this room and then which temperature uh, were used. And then we also encourage to wash hands with the alcohol. In terms of creating safe eating environments, in, in campus, we have a cooperative store, which all the uh, MPUST staff are shareholder of this store. In this store, we can provide milk, egg, uh, healthy food. We're developing by our Department of Food Science, such as Professor Xie. He won several awards because he developed more than 300 type of healthy products, such as uh, Low, uh, uh, low, uh, or less salty uh, soy sauce. So uh, the student and faculty member staff can purchase those foods uh, in campus. And those are just uh, to show you some image of the our property stores. 
Besides the, uh, the store, we also have some best selling products such as our milk. Uh, we have about uh, 20,000 US dollars sales uh, per, per, per uh, month. And also some other things, uh, vegetable yogurts or cooking or eggs, uh, they are all popular uh, food that the staff mm. or student will buy. We also have our in-campus sustainable farm and also greenhouse. They can also provide veg fresh vegetable. They will email uh, staff or professor and then student. We can just order uh, through emails or phones and then we can get fresh vegetable from uh, grow and in a campus. The self-grow vegetable is very much uh, affordable, about uh, one US dollar per the bag. So uh, some of our staff just rely on those in, instead of going to uh, very crowded traditional market outside or convenience stores uh, outside the campus. Uh, our Department of Hotel and Restaurant Management, they also weekly will uh, produce uh, freshly baked bread. And then some of the bread uh, also came to our Office of International Affairs uh, last uh, few days ago. And then when they come or they will just immediately uh, buy all of them. So it's kind of a mobile uh, bakery, which is very convenient. Besides that, uh, we also got emails saying that, okay, now we have some chicken meat for sale. And then you can email them, it's about eight US dollar per uh, chicken. And then uh, every three months about 200 chicken will be uh, sold in our uh, live farm uh, by the Department of Animal Science. So this is my last slide. I want to invite all our partners from the uh, Green University Alliance. Um, this year, at, at the end of November, we are hosting an international sustainable development conference. The theme of this year is our common futures. We will have four uh, topics. First one is disaster prevention and recovery. Second one, smart agriculture. So one, circular economy. Last one, ecosystem restoration. And we work with this uh, four university, two from Indonesia, one from Malaysia, and one from Thailand. So uh, the call for abstract is still opening to, is extended until the end of this month. So we welcome you to join us. Um, thank you. And then we welcome any questions later. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Helen Chien, for very interesting cases in Taiwan and your university. Uh, for the next presentation, I would like to invite Professor Kwasdi Korba from Tunisia, who will talk about managing socially accountable university during COVID-19 pandemic. The time is yours. 10 minutes, sir. Do you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Yes, thank you very much. I'll try to send the presentation. Can you see it now? Yes, we can see your slide. Thank you very much. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is uh, Wesley Korpa. I'm a professor from the University of Sousse, Tunisia. And uh, I will talk uh, about uh, 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 Tunisian universities in general. And I will give uh, more examples uh, about um, Sousse University uh, managing a um, accountable university. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, start with um, the general context of uh, COVID-19 in Tunisia. The first patient in Tunisia was discovered by March uh, 2. Today we have around 1,050 cases and 50 deaths. We even had uh, five consecutive, consecutive days with zero new case, but the curve started to rise again 
uh, with two to six cases daily uh, three days ago. Actually, we have a great chance that the government took drastic decisions um, to face this pandemic. Indeed, 10 days after uh, the first case, the universities, colleges, and schools were locked down. It was the March 12th. And the whole country has been locked down by March 20. So um, we had um, only one million and a half people working, which are um, the first need administrations, industries, police, and government among 11 million citizens. So um, the first weeks were very difficult, really. It was difficult to recognize or even to reinvent the university organization, mainly because all the administrative staff were, was um, locked down. So uh, only the managers and the executives were working uh, in uh, the administrative buildings and uh, all the others, professors, staff, and so on, were invited to work from home. So this is not really uh, easy because we never experienced that before. And we have to, uh, to learn working from home with all the difficulties you know. Uh, during this period, rectors and deans made a number of uh, meetings to discuss the new situation and uh, mainly to learn what to do. Because, um, um, sorry, because um, the situation was not really prepared or um, expected. Uh, in SUS, uh, we uh, were introduced to green metric uh, ranking uh, last year. And uh, this year, we, uh, we were uh, the first university in Tunisia. Uh, this was very exciting and challenging for us to continue. We, uh, this year, we also uh, were uh, introduced to Times Higher Education Impact Ranking. With, um, we were um, ranked in, in the 17 SDGs. So uh, we, we had, uh, we made a lot of effort to, um, to go um, in the road of sustainability. But let, let, I can already say that uh, in such a crisis, it's hard, to, uh, it's hard not to say impossible to talk about sustainability. I mean, heads were simply elsewhere. Uh, but if I can say, COVID-19 sorry, is good for nature. Universities were empty, which means less water, less energy consumption, less waste, no air conditioners, uh, which is a huge energy consuming um, sector, mainly in these hot months. But I think that uh, beyond the sarcasm, we all noticed that nature was taking a breath these last months. Uh, so as, as I said, universities, uh, university leaders, sorry, had to discover uh, and identify the new challenges. Uh, as accountable university, having, the, uh, having a responsibility towards the society. So, as as a countable university, the university had to switch brutally and massively to e-learning. But this mission has a, a major uh, objective is to maintain the relation with the students locked down home and reassure them as well as their families about the fate of courses, the degrees, diplomas, and so on. But the problem is that professors, professors were not really ready to distance learning. And some professors were totally not familiar with any platform or software of e-learning. So this, is, this was a very big challenge. And uh, in SUS, uh, uh, the pedagogic innovation cell 
in the university worked very hard to uh, very quickly identify the needs and organized distance lectures to professors for learning, discovering, and mastering e-learning. No software were imposed. Uh, we, can, we could use uh, Moodle, uh, Microsoft Team, social media, and so on. We, have ju we had just one constraint, not to use Zoom. <laughs> Actually, our National Security Agency uh, of Internet um, told us not to use uh, Zoom because of uh, the uh, alert of security and security issues uh, we got uh, at the beginning. So this is my first meeting with Zoom uh, platform. <laughs> it's a discovery for, uh, for me uh, also. Um, the second challenge was to, to worry about the foreign students. Uh, we have a lot uh, of uh, foreign students in uh, Tunisia and, oh, sorry, someone, ah. okay, thank you. And uh, 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 the majority of them did not travel home. So uh, with the lockdown, their situation could be very difficult, morally, physically, and from a logistical point of view. This is why the university and the students' associations identified these uh, STUC students and um, contacted them to know their needs and organized collection to supply them. This was very important for our uh, students and, uh, and guests. The third issue was to uh, um, participate to uh, the, uh, the, uh, the war against COVID. A um, lot of initiatives were uh, launched by the technology institutions and uh, uh, association of, uh, in association with medical school to think about this issue. So uh, we had a group of students hosted by uh, the technology and engineering schools and sometimes financed by private industrial companies uh, to manufacture 3D printed protective visors to protect uh, doctors. Handouts were manufactured and distributed uh, for free to hospitals all around the country. Um, a uh, disinfection portal was designed. I will show you some uh, pictures uh, just after. Uh, and delivered to hospital uh, university. So this is, uh, these are uh, some photos. Um, so uh, an oxygenation device was designed by the engineering school and validated by the medical uh, staff, uh, then produced inside the university to be used in emergency uh, services, and uh, also a, a decision-aided uh, national platform has been developed with the Ministry of Health to help him uh, knowing uh, the cases, their location, uh, the evolution of the situation, and uh, so on. So university had uh, put the, its scientific and technological know-how to serve the society cri uh, in this crisis as an accountable university having a responsibility um, towards the, um, the society. So, um, can we continue the next slide? So we have here some uh, photos of uh, a diving mask transformed to a respiratory uh, device, uh, the oxygenation device, the um, disinfection portal, and uh, the visor uh, mask. So now, next slide, please. Uh, we uh, started two, uh, two weeks ago the uh, the, conf uh, the, conf uh, the confinement sorry which was planned by uh, the government in three phases may 4th universities open with 50 percent of capacity only staff only uh, may 19 uh, second phase with uh, 75 percent of staff uh, capacity and june 1st professors and students will be back and courses resume so this gives us new challenges, which, which are, for example, how to organize lectures while respecting the mandatory social distancing and the safety constraints. 
how to teach during very hot months, mainly be- without air conditioner, which is, by the way, very good for nature, but not v- very good for professors, especially with, uh, while wearing masks during the lectures. One minute left. How to manage waste. Yes, it's the last point. Yes. Uh, how to manage waste, especially because of the fear of handling possibly infected uh, waste by uh, the staff. So all these are uh, new points to, uh, to deal with, new challenges. And as you see, within only four months, university changed several times its objectives and faced different challenges and had, and simply the university has no other choice than to adapt and reinvent itself uh, each month. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor uh, Kampaladi Kurba from Tunisia. Uh, very interesting uh, experience from your university. Uh, I would like next to invite Dr. Esmail Karami Deh Kordi from Iran, who will uh, present Managing Sustainable University and Food Sufficiency at the University of Zanzan during COVID-19 pandemic. The time is yours, sir. Uh, hello, everybody. Again, thank you so much uh, for organizing this uh, web conference and hope we have a good opportunity to uh, learn from each other. Um, uh, let me to use my PowerPoint and uh, can you see this PowerPoint? Yes, we can. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, actually, if uh, we look at the, the diagrams and uh, the out, uh, outbreak of the virus in the world, why we can see that uh, the number of the cases are infected by this virus are increasing. So based on the latest information I have used from WHO, uh, almost 5 million people in the world wide has been uh, infected by this virus. And so still this diagram shows is a sharp increase and uh, we may uh, face with this problem by the end of the year. And we have to work and uh, hardly and the universities have very important uh, a very important contribution to help the society to uh, reduce this or mitigate this problem and also rehabilitate uh, what has happened yet. So over 320 people have uh, lost their life and uh, we have to send our condolence to all of people who have been affected by this uh, uh, virus. So if we look at the top uh, 15 uh, countries who have been affected, uh, uh, University uh, United States at the, the first, uh, and then um, so Russia, Spain, Brazil, United Kingdom, Italy, France, Germany, Turkey, and Iran is also uh, has uh, over 120, 20,000 people have been affected and over seven. Uh, thousand people have lost their life. So, and this is the, uh, this shows that uh, based on the population, uh, what percentage or of the uh, countries have been uh, affected more. And so the COVID-19 has impact on sustainability in terms of several aspects. The first is public health and safety, employment, and livelihood are affected by, based on this uh, trade and economy uh, worldwide in, in, in at national and international level. We may have uh, some problem in political stability, national security and social security, and also food security and environment is one of the uh, most important issues. So uh, I, I want to mostly focus on the food security, but uh, this, uh, uh, 
problem has made over pressure on health and medical services that might uh, systematically have, uh, affect other aspects of the health issues and psychologically also uh, the, the world uh, population has been affected as increased panic, hysteria, and etc. Uh, if we look at the uh, workplace uh, uh, closure, we can see lots of uh, uh, workplaces worldwide have been closed the, during this time. And now it's based on the latest information. We can see some of the countries have still have lockdown totally, or some of them to some part have uh, this lockdown. And so this means that economically, are, and this is the school and university closures, the most part of the world, now you can see this have this problem. Uh, if we look at the economy of the world, uh, we, uh, uh, we estimate in 2020, and even some people say 2021, the world has minus seven, uh, um, uh, GDP reduction. So, and in if you look at developed country minus 60, developing countries minus 36, 30.6, and household consumption is reduced, export is reduced, agri food real value added, mostly in most part of them are, are reduced, uh, and also agri uh, agricultural food uh, exports also reduced. So, this means that. Both economy and social security, so sorry, food security is affected. If we look at the poverty, uh, we expect that poverty will increase, extreme poverty will increase 20% in um, totally in total population and in rural population is expected, estimated 15%. And in some uh, area, for example, in uh, Africa and Sub Sahara, 23% is increased. So, um, and based on the based on the uh, some of the, the we expect a hundred and forty million additional people fall into poverty, and um, and also the food security uh, will would rise along with poverty because most of the uh, poor people live in agriculture or depend on agricultural activities and live in rural areas. So agriculture and food security are essential in most countries and some supply disruption caused by reduced labor mobility, for example, for seasonal migration, labor, and et cetera, will affect agriculture. Uh, some food, for example, perishable farm product, products and fresh food, vegetables, flowers, some, some fruits, etc., cetera, will uh, significantly suffer great post-harvest losses uh, or est estimated 5% due to, due to logistic uh, problems and demand follow. And transport, transport problems also will affect food supply in worldwide. Some countries may uh, ban exporting uh, some, some food. And so we will expect that the fluctuation of prices, some foods, will increase their prices and some other foods might decrease. So, but uh, to what extent the countries are affected by uh, uh, this COVID-19 in food security, it depends whether they are rich or poor. Poor countries might affect it more uh, than the, the rich countries. So governments have to develop policies to respond to this valid impact to avoid supply chain disruption and higher and higher food prices and severe economic fallout for millions of employment. So without support, this global health crisis would thus cause a major poverty and food crisis in the future. So let me also say, uh, have something about the University of St. John contribution. So, uh, since the 19 February, when uh, the start of the COVID-19 in Iran, uh, universities and schools uh, started to react. And um, after about uh, one week or two weeks, all, this, all the schools and universities were closed. And social uh, physical distancing measures were uh, in, uh, applied in the all part of the Iran and all including universities 
and still the universities are closed for students, but the staff and researcher can work based on the uh, physical distancing measures. Online teaching and learning and academic support were, uh, were considered seriously, and all the courses, you can say 100% of the courses, uh, the theoretical courses were provided by uh, online teachings, though it was a problem based on software and hardware at the beginning of the first weeks of, the, uh, of this um, activity, but then everything gets um, uh, smooth. And uh, now we, have, we are continuing. And we expect that in two weeks, in the next two weeks, uh, where uh, we will uh, open some of the practical courses for students and, uh, and continue uh, this practice during summer. Participation with Ministry of Agriculture uh, for communication intervention through agricultural extension systems in rural communities was one another uh, very major uh, uh, and uh, contribution of this university. Establishing research teams for the COVID-19 and the health and safety measure in campus for all staff and places. Con uh, collaboration with health and medical universities uh, was another. Uh, activities producing alcohol and sanitizer in research labs to uh, uh, to have to provide uh, this uh, materials both for the university and some of the community social responsibilities and supporting local communities both, both uh, based mostly of those were in, in need that all of them were voluntary voluntarily by uh, the, the staff uh, who supported uh, some of the rural uh, people who lost their job during this uh, problem. And uh, uh, these are some of the materials, uh, some of the brochures and, um, uh, and uh, pamphlet leaflets who we produced uh, with the collaboration of the researchers and also Ministry of Agriculture to uh, uh, help uh, rural and agricultural communities. Over 30 um, brochures were produced for each agricultural activities for uh, rural women, uh, nomads, and uh, uh, also uh, um, uh, all of the activity, uh, agricultural activities in livestock, crop, crop farming, vegetable farming, and etc. And uh, also we, uh, participated in radio and TV discussion panel uh, with uh, participation of the Minister of Agriculture using social networks to uh, have more information. Motion graphics uh, also were produced, webinars, video conferences, lots of video and, and uh, conferences were in all uh, parts of the Iran we contributed. So, sorry. One minute left, sir. Oh uh, yeah, it, it seems that I have a problem for, uh, oh yeah, sorry. So, but still we have some challenges for international collaboration, particularly if you want to work for, not just for food security, for other sustainability activities. For example, uh, we see in some parts of the world uh, increased nationalization, unfortunately. So you can see, for example, United States, uh, had, had some pressure on WHO. So this is not, uh, it's, it means that it's a type of nationalization rather than going to internationalization because we need more work on internationally. Reduce international cooperation, postponing research, mobility fund for research and other challenges, conference halts, work for international directors also is complicated, challenge for exams for students, particularly those international students, a stability online services and possible digital divide. But on the other hand, the COVID-19 is also an opportunity for uh, working internationally on a, on a common problem that shows us we need to learn that this is the type of uh, problem that we need to work together. We can't easily say one country or another country. All of us, we have to go. This is a space for scientists and uh, uh, researchers to work and have uh, technology to contribute and also mutual learning with de between developing and developed countries and interdependence of academic and research institutions. So 
this is both we have problem and also opportunity we need to work on that and in the future thank you so much for your attention i wish we had more time to <clears throat> uh, uh, to show some of the uh, activities further activities in the future thank you so much thank you dr ismail very interesting presentation the last speaker i will invite dr Jaime alberto romero infante from colombia he will present managing sustainable university and food sufficiency at the El Bosque University during COVID-19 pandemic. Please, time is yours, sir. Sustainable University and Food Sufficiency During COVID-19 Pandemic. Um, the content we, I have here. So events and facts, projects and opportunities, and future events an achievement. Mm. In fact, uh, first of all, uh, we have in Colombia uh, the first case in 6 March. The total people with coronavirus is 16,295 people. Uh, the number of that people, uh, 592. Percentage of that people, 6.6. .6. 3.6% uh, recovered 23.9% and positivity 9.5%. National government petitions uh, in health and life safe. It's established the compulsory use of the mask and the physical distance of two meters between people. This abuse by security uh, measures for the premise and the public service business. And uh, in Bogota rules, there, are, there was some special rules. For example, for, for incoming into the, into the work for construction sector, uh, they can go in the, in the work between 10 to 7, 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. The retail and, and marketing retail uh, could be from 12 o'clock to 12 o'clock in the night. And manufacturing sector, could they go uh, in, in, the, in the work uh, until 5 o'clock in the night? Um, national government decisions and food and beverage, that has been the, the main Thing that I, I want to, to speak about what happened here in Colombia. During the pandemic, Colombia defined the adequate management uh, of food and beverage, guarantee to supply and avail availability of safe food, self control through the agriculture chain, strengthen measures to prevent foodborne diseases, and man maintain a focus inspection, surveillance and control actions national territory during the accordance with the county. So it means that all the supermarkets had been open during the period of the quarantine and that we are opening uh, all the places, all, the, all the, the, the business places and the people is going to to, to, the, to the streets uh, normally. Uh, in university education uh, institutions and the sustainability during the pandemic, uh, it happens at all the, the, the our, our preceding uh, speakers uh, by one day and all the people has to be adapt, uh, they improve, distance and the virtual cases with uh, synchronic sessions 
and uh, e-learning. E Use uh, the Microsoft Teams uh, or model platforms for, for giving works and students. Governance by means, governance of the university by means of the Meet Google or Zoom or Cisco platforms. Uh, biosecurity course applied to handling COVID-19 samples in my university for all, for many institutions. And we did many webinars, for example, in innovation in uh, higher education or development plan or higher uh, education in Bogota. Or we did uh, training uh, at entrepreneurial mentors in, in, in the city. Projects, research project, the action, um, assisted by, uh, we, we are constructing um, some, uh, in some places, in some universities, assisted respirators. We, are, we have a project in our bioethics department uh, for financing mechanism for the, for the women, peace and humanitarian the action, design and implementation of the COVID-19 detection laboratory in, uh, in my university, proposal for the creation of the molecular microbiology center and sales service in Latin America. We have a project, a program that's been named Crecer, Grow. Crecer is a, is a project that we are, by means we are trying to permit all the students and all the uh, teachers uh, who go to the, to the work, uh, or job opportunities and strategies to, re to relationship in the public and private organizations uh, in order to continue with the economy function. Uh, in this case here, we have three, three uh, Three mm, chapters, economic cha support, labor support, and strategic alliance. The economic support is for permitting that the people, the families work during the pandemic and to give labor opportunities uh, by, uh, in accordance and in agreement with many um, uh, companies here in Colombia in Bogota, and uh, with uh, some institutions of the government, for example, uh, the, the government of the cities. It, it has been a very, a very, a very important uh, role. Uh, we had grants and we, we have labor offers and uh, students, teachers and administrative had been supported by a foundation grants. Uh, and the effects of the pandemic rules are in, in our day in our daily life. Pandemic has been an opportunity to implement disruptive rules for restaurants and coffees, co cafes, and changing the way of management, waste, and recovering value. This has been a very important opportunity. So we change the way in which we are living. And by means of this change, for example, the animals of the surrounding forests of the city came inside the city and uh, give, give us uh, the, the pleasure and delight for, for their presence here in this chaotic city that has been very slowly um, and, and delicious. Uh, for projects, projects and products, uh, we have to, to increase the solar plants. We have to end our solar plant because the, the construction has been, uh, one part has been uh, interrupted. Uh, food security plants for quality life in zones of the city and had, uh, with high impact and its isolation. Uh, design, production, and commercialization of didactic games for climate change uh, knowledge and adaptation. This is one project that we are uh, formulating. Improving design and construction of, of plants for recurring value in San Andreas, for example, 
one island in the, in the Caribbean uh, uh, Sea of Colombia, have the national government in the strategy for controlling, understanding, and preventing effects of COVID-19 pandemic. This is one of our projects. We are applying circular economy uh, by means of the uh, two cycles, biologic and technical, uh, with materials, fabricants, and suppliers, we connecting energy recovering and dam. We have one center of technological development and innovation for business, social, and ecological sustainability. Uh, scientific, entrepreneurial, and technological service providing this center, uh, 3D modeling, printing to the industry, certified test for industrial infrastructure and public service companies, marketing of tenders and proposals for public entities, transfer contracts to the ANDI, the, the National Association of Industrial People, uh, consulting and contracts for food and healthy industrial and uh, technology, trade associations or in association with Cubex, that is one center that we uh, created in the last months and uh, we are providing services for the uh, companies, the uh, entrepreneurial uh, people and prototyping and experimental models. Uh, this is what, what we see about this pandemic uh, time is that projects and products are done to continue to work this year on improving efforts in our Colombian universities in sustainability lifestyles and changing the green behavior. Uh, education for sustainability after quarantine now is easy to move society for change because we change because we change it in one day and we adapted our functioning to continue and we continue and we reach what we did. So now we are ready for changing all our life. In this, this could be done by means of some masters that we are, uh, we have some masters, we are creating some others in this. Time. So master in food security, master in environmental health, master in sustainable efficiency production, Master in Organizational Management Projects and Master in Software Development. These can be these are, are being complemented by means of the Master in Sustainability in Infrastructure and Construction, the Master in Alternative Energy Management, and the Master in Sustainability Tourism Management that are uh, functioning with the same with some uh, the same uh, classes and, and lessons, and the PhD in sustainability energy. One minute left. Engineering. This is what we are uh, doing, and this is the opportunity to change our life and to uh, reach the uh, sustainability objectives that we have. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Jaime, for your presentation. I uh, would like also to thank to all speakers for sharing their experience on regarding sustainable university and food sufficiency. Now it's time for discussion and we still have approximately 17 minutes. I would like to invite two short questions. You can raise your hand maybe and please tell us who you are and where you are come from and to whom your question to. Any questions? For you who follow this webinar through YouTube, you can send your question to Sabrina and Sabrina will send to the speakers. Okay, no questions? If not, then uh, I would like to Invite Dr. Agustin Kusumayanti. 
representative of Universitas Indonesia as the host institution for this webinar to give a uh, short speech, maybe. Please, Dr. Agustin. Hey, uh, thank you uh, very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, honorable participants of the of this uh, webinar, uh, very good uh, evening. Uh, it's really um, an honor for us, the Universitas Indonesia, to have you all, the participants of this webinar, especially for those who are um, as uh, presenters uh, this evening. Um, first of all, let me deliver apology from Director of uh, Universitas Indonesia, Professor Ari Kuncoro. He has another agenda so that he cannot join with us uh, this evening in this very important meeting. Uh, this evening we have uh, lessons, we have learned the experience of various universities from various countries. We have learned the challenges that have been faced in various countries and how our colleagues from um, different universities respond to the problems that face by uh, the people in, in their countries as well as by the university especially. It's really um, uh, the discussion, the share is really um, interesting because we uh, many uh, different activities consisting of um, uh, a new um, innovations in teaching and learning, in um, research as well as also in public service and uh, community engagement programs. I think uh, this is really very important information. We can learn each other and I believe that information that we have heard from our colleagues this evening can inspire us uh, to develop further uh, new innovations, further creative uh, activities within our university so that we can later on um, provide a better services to our students as well as, as, well as our uh, people in our countries. So um, let me deliver my sincere um, uh, thank um, speakers this evening. Thank you so much for all your valuable uh, sharing about your experience, uh, your knowledge, and then um, your new information that really enrich our uh, knowledge. Also, uh, uh, let me thank also all the participants of this uh, meeting. I hope that um, we can learn from the materials that have been presented by all the pre uh, presenters. And then uh, later on, we can um, develop a new ideas and new uh, innovations in our university. Last but not least, let me thank the um, organizers of these uh, activities. The UI Green Metric team, led by Professor Riri Fitri Sari. Thank you so much, Professor Riri, for your consistent work uh, working with these um, environmental issues, sustainability issues, and then uh, keep promoting the UI Green Metrics to of our colleagues. Thank you also to all the members of the UI Green Metrics that already. Um, uh, did uh, they already done their their best so that uh, this meeting can be managed very well? So uh, again, um, I think we will have another uh, international web, uh, webinar series. Um, maybe Professor Lily later on can inform us about the next uh, webinar series. So. Uh, in this occasion, let me invite all of you to join our next uh, meeting and then let's share our knowledge and experience and let's develop together and make our world better. Thank you so much and see you in the next uh, webinar series. Thank you, Dr. Agustin.
Okay, before I hand it to Prof. Lee, I would like to thank to all speakers for their very good, interesting, as well as inspiring presentations. I think we have learned a lot today from all the speakers, especially related to how to manage sustainable university as well as food sufficiency during COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, we really hope that we can take and apply good experiences from all speakers in our institutions. Thank you very much, everyone. Back to Prof. Lee for closing remarks. Prof. Lee. Uh, National coordinators of the I-2020 uh, in Indonesia, uh, Prof. Ambarian for from uh, I thank uh, Dr. Agustin Secretary Indonesia. And also, my dear friend, Professor Santiago Garcia Granda, director of Oviedo University. Uh, I've been visiting all these uh, universities who has presented their work today here. And I can be a witness that they are the real green and real uh, agricultural based university in which they provide uh, food uh, sufficiency for all our community. So I really thank them for uh, sharing their work and all the experience with the COVID-19 pandemic situation today. And I really treasure uh, the participation of all friends. Also, I see uh, from, uh, from Woodland University, from Russia, from Denmark, from uh, United States, uh, from all over the world, actually from the Southern uh, part of United uh, America, in which we know that have a lot of friends everywhere and we are facing the same problem well actually yesterday i was watching the movie of hollywood movie uh, the day after tomorrow and i really think that based on our work looking into that we can uh, make this opportunity of the COVID 19 pandemic to uh, be able to go to the next step of the education best education for our future generation and i'm very happy that i met all the heroes today uh, I know that you are participating and you've been kindly waiting uh, for the moment. And I'm sure that uh, we will uh, do the same uh, 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 events, uh, which will be on the 9th of uh, June, uh, the same time on Tuesday, three weeks time. If your university would like, or your president, your vice president would like to present uh, the situation in your university, please do write to our secretariat will be very happy to do this. And I would like to uh, announce that yesterday, the universities in the United Kingdom already do the first, uh, well, already the third uh, workshop on UI Green Metric and University of Nottingham and Oxford University, Nottingham, Trent University, Warwick, and many other universities have already gathered and they already uh, start working on the uh, four on the questionnaire that we already sent you uh, starting from Friday last week. So as usual, you will be uh, doing the data submission. We still hope that you are still with the extra, uh, you know, motivated, motivated personnel working together, knowing that we have to survive. We have to make our university uh, operation works, even though uh, there are less students at the moment for social uh, and physical distancing. And we will wait for uh, your uh, questionnaire until 31st of October. And also we'd like to announce that in September, we will have the work workshop, uh, in national, international workshop hosted by Zanjan University, Iran. Uh, and please uh, 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 write papers or we will contact you about that because we already closed, I think. And also we'd like your participation also. But knowing that we have a lot of friends everywhere, I know that we can do better to our world. So uh, as usual, uh, I would like to announce that we will have uh, these uh, events and please uh, contact us if you would like to do your university, uh, your country, uh, organize your country uh, workshops uh, so that uh, we will still uh, pass through this difficult time knowing that we can do things from our own room at home. Thank you very much for being here today. Thank you, and I will see you on the 9th of June. Goodbye, everyone. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank Bye. You. Bye. Thank, Thank you, you for all. See you. Bye.
Thank you very much. Thank you for Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Thank you very much for your efforts. Thank you for the nice seminar. Thank you from Denmark. Thank you, everybody. See you on the 9th of June. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Johnny, gracias por todo. Gracias. Bye, Jaime. Bye, Bye, Santiago. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye, Professor de Santiago. Nice to meet you, Riti. Bye. See you later. Bye. Thank you very much. Bundle of thanks for your cooperation and your